Bloodborne is rated Mature 17 Plus by the ESRB for blood and gore and violence. This Let's Play is directed at an adult audience and will feature adult language and discussion of the subject material. Viewer discretion is advised. He is looking at you, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Bloodborne on Orange Ranger Plays. I am the Orange Ranger. Last time, we continued to make our way through Hemwick Charnel Lane and ended up taking on the two witches of Hemwick who we defeated and then took their eyeballs. All these people hanging up here were not so fortunate. This time, we are going to explore what was unlocked by us doing that right after these messages. If you Epic Gamers could do just a couple of things for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Number one, leave a comment below this video. Let me know what you thought of this episode, of the game I'm playing, how I'm doing, your favorite games, anything like that, how you're doing today. Just leave a comment down below. Number two, while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button to let both me and YouTube know that you liked this video. Number three is a big one. Please subscribe. This channel has a long climb to get up towards monetization when things can get really fun, but every subscription helps. Subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe. I really appreciate that. The last one is not a requirement. It's just something I would appreciate, but it's not required. If you would like to give any financial support to this channel, you can check me out on both Patreon and Coffee at Orange Ranger Videos. And if you'd like some merchandise in exchange for your financial contribution, you can check me out on Teespring, also at Orange Ranger Videos. Oh, also make sure to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook at Orange Ranger Plays fan page. I'm on Twitter at Orange R N G R Plays, and I'm on Twitch at Orange underscore Ranger underscore Plays. Thanks a lot, and may the power protect you. And we're back, so now let's go ahead and see what our Triumph Over the Witches unlocked. There's a little hallway down here. I will say, if anything, I'm pretty sure the next room is closed off, and this is a dead end. But if anything seems like there's going to be further battle, I'll probably back off and go to the Hunter's Dream, because I have 48,000 Echoes. Open up the door. Looks to me like the witches had a prisoner that probably, I mean, yeah, they gave up their item, so they died. You can tell by the hat, this was a hunter. Uh, and they had this hunter imprisoned and they died here. I'm just making sure there's not anything else. All right, hunter, what'd you have? Here it is, everybody. Here it is, the rune workshop tool. This will allow us to use carol runes. And the easiest way to describe how carol runes are used is they're like gemstones for your brain instead of your weapons. Back to the dream. And we're back. Our insight is all the way up to 21. Two, three, three levels. You know, I want to put some in vitality. I don't want that to run too far away from everything else. Um, put a level in strength. You know what? I'll be goofy. Let's toss a level into arcane. I've defeated another boss. Can you please say something different? Ay, ay, ay. Okay, I guess not. Was asking too much. Um. So, I didn't know this. Um. I was using the last of my blood vials as I entered that fight. I only have eight left. So, yeah, let's go ahead and dump that into vials and at least make that a little better. 
Um, I am probably going to do a couple of runs through, um, now I'm thinking about, like, is Hemwick Charnel Lane a good place to run through for Echoes? I'll probably do a couple runs through Old Yarnum off screen, um, to grind up blood vials because that's a little bit low for me. Okay, um... Another thing I want to look at really quick is the insight shop. And I just want to see what's there because 21 is a lot of insight. I don't necessarily know the required insight numbers at certain levels. I feel like that's something I should look into. But, um, like, it's also a currency that you can use. Um, you can buy a bloodshot eyeball for two insight. I have seven of them. <laughs> um, any new gear? That would be a no. Like that. Nothing really, but seeing the rune symbol reminded me. Let's just go ahead and do that. Is it me, or is this a little more ornate and, like, more candles on it? I don't know a specific time that I could go back to and be like this is what it looked like then but anyway this is the memory altar and now that we have the tool we can memorize a carol rune you know like etching it on your brain to acquire its eldritch strength i will say that um the hunter's mark which i'm actually thinking about getting as my third tattoo that's how much i'm loving bloodborne here um the hunter's mark is a carol rune and um, from how I've heard it described, it is the rune that allows hunters to not die. Uh, what they do is when a hunter realizes they've been killed, uh, they focus, it says this on a loading screen, but like they focus all of their thoughts on this rune and they will wake back up at the last lantern they were at, but losing all of their echoes. So anyway, we have three slots for carol runes and then oath memory is when you pledge yourself to certain factions you can get a rune that will uh have certain effects right now we only have one so we'll do that and what i want to see toggle stats because there we go uh because this shows my defense on the lower right and hit that rune and oh good nothing changes Oh, there it is. Okay. Dam okay, so it's a damage reduction rune. I would still think that those stats would show up in physical defense and whatever, but... Um... Like, I can't go... Oh, okay, so there you go, yeah. You see 245, 220, 185, 236, up to 267, so that is a 22 increase in physical with a 23 increase in blunt and a 25 increase in thrust and a 23 increase in blood. So now we're a little tankier, which is good. Let us... Now I want to see if I can fort... Okay, I can fortify. No, I can't. No, I can't. I have five twin bloodstone shards, and I need eight. I can fortify the axe, and I'm now carrying the rifle spear. I should really just go sell it. But, um... Um... That I could do with bloodstone shards. I have 71. But no, we're focusing on the saw spear this run. So, um... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I because I thought I had more than five. I read that wrong. I have eight. I need five. The problem is echoes. I'm 58 short. <laughs> Can't just loan it to me until the third. Weirdly enough, today was the third. It's now 12.09 a.m. on the fourth, but today's the third. So interesting. That's where my brain landed. But yes, I will sell. I will sell. I will sell an antidote. Just one. 60 Echoes. More than enough for what I need. 
y'all it's a good time and by the way i didn't because when you fortify weapons they also get repaired you'll see remember like repair 317 echoes right fortify weapon the saw spear is going up to plus five and now it is doing more damage than the hunter axe uh plus three so good i'm glad okay and now go back to repair when things get fortified they also get fixed blood gem fortification i have two echoes <laughs> blood gem fortification uh let's check this out because we got some new ones i know by the way i can also probably sell these if i'm not using them so okay nothing on that and nothing on that um i don't really need to worry well i was gonna say i don't really need to worry about the gems that are on the hunter's axe but it is technically speaking my backup weapon so i saw a positive number there this one's 53 but just a blunt and attack goes down otherwise so this one and over here 44. Yeah, there's 43. And then again, increasing blunt at the cost of physical. 44. Okay. So, if I need it, the Hunter Axe is good to go. Okay, okay. Now we're only 10 minutes into this episode. And you may have noticed when I got the uh, rune tool, Hemwick Charnel Lane was yet another dead end so there's a couple different things we can do i just remembered because i was going to say we could go down to that area that the hunters were guarding but i also remembered that we have gotten ourselves into the forbidden woods so let's go there what about those woods Never go into those woods. They're forbidden. But why? Because it's forbidden! That was a really bad, like, Beauty and the Beast type thing. Like, Oh, it's like, never go into the West Wing. Why? Because it's forbidden! Never go into the woods. Why? Because it's forbidden! <laughs> Throw a little boss nass in there for you. Free of charge! <laughs> What am I on anyway? Okay. Remember that there's a bird here. I did a really good job of killing it. There we go. It's also one here. <laughs> now it's dead. Okay. I've mentioned this at least once, but it is a bit of an irritant with this game. How how often, and like, it happens so much, it, it feels like it has to be intentional. But like, you will be right at a level where like, you can hit an enemy, like the one that came over the bridge, that guy. Hit them twice, and it looks like their bar goes all the way down to like, practically nothing, but they're still alive. You have to hit them three times. Okay, remember, that's a button. So yeah, I think the best strategy in that case is to run, 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 get past the button and a good little bit past, and then jump, which again is double tap circle, run is hold circle, and then while you're running, if you double tap it, uh, you'll jump uh, to make sure you don't get hit by that. Okay. I just remembered some of the types of enemies that are in these woods, and I am not particularly thrilled. You got fucked up by me. Okay. <laughs> okay, time for you to go bye-bye. Bye-bye! <clears throat> Actually, you lived, so... That's the area. Actually, I think that's a legit area, too. But, but, 
y'all, I, like, like again, you know, this has also come up before, but like, y- you'll be like, what? And and my response will always be, just don't. So anyway, <laughs> kind of moving my way through here. The, oh, oh, puppies. It's weird. It's like the 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 aggro circles don't seem to. He bit me and seemed to die. I don't know if I got my swing through, but anyway, um, the aggro circles don't seem to take elevation into account. Oh yeah, I remember this. There's a dude up there that's gonna throw. Wait, 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 wait. hang on. Hold on just a second there. Isn't this up above where he is? It is. It is. Sorry to drop in like this. Wait, what? Oh, there's another one. I was like, no, but he was the one. Oh, there were two. That was actually really funny. I'm not laughing, but it was really funny. <laughs> okay, now I'm laughing. This is shield. He's like, <laughs> they can come up here, and he is going to not gonna do him any good in his particular life's being alive skills. Excuse me? You came over from over there. The other one's taking a piss in the bushes. <laughs> it does look like that's what he's doing! Because he's just kind of thrusting forward with his, with his pelvis a little bit. <laughs> Oh, I think this game is driving me a little bit crazy. Hope you enjoyed your piss. It's the last thing you did before you died. All right. Oh, goodness. Oh, there are snakes in these woods. And y'all are going to see when I say there are snakes in these woods, that's an understatement. Oh, your hand was stuck. There you go. I helped you with it. Okay. Oh, these, I, I remember always, like, they're dying and stuff, but these are pretty flowers. I remember something about the pretty flowers. I don't remember what it was. Maybe that they were near this killer. This harbinger of har- You just tried to stab down- You have a giant, like, metal axe thing, and you just tried- Yeah! You just tried to stab down at me with a torch. There's a reason you're not alive anymore. I just want you to think about that. In here are three beast blood pellets, which I have not yet used. I can talk about that for a minute because mm, it's interesting and it's probably dumb. And a lot of people that play this, here's what it comes down to. It's like, why do you play video games, right? Like what kind of experience are you trying to get? I was hoping that I would land somewhere where I was still alive. <laughs> I wasn't sure that was going to be the case. Um, and that sounds like a melodramatic question for this sort of thing. It's like, why do you play video games? You know, um, hello, Skull Beast. If y'all cost me a Skull Beast, there would have been fried crow on the menu tonight. Don't get me wrong, there still is, but like, you know, I'd have been more mad. Because yes, now they're giving three twin bloodstone shards. Remember that I needed five to level my weapon up last time. So, already have three for whatever the next step up is. I was saying, why do you play video games? You know, Bloodborne... Bloodborne is really a good example of this because um, the people who play Bloodborne are probably split pretty evenly into two camps. And there's, your, there's your get good crowd, and I'm not even saying that in an outright bad way. You, like, get good is toxic, don't get me wrong, you know, because not all gamers are, whoops, I forgot that was a thing. But now we're down here. And I have wood on my head. <laughs> um, you know, get good, like, doesn't acknowledge that some gamers have disabilities, whether it's, like, attention, 
you know, or like mental health or like actual physical disabilities or whatever. Um, or some people just just don't have that type of ability to endure these types of games and enjoy them enough to practice them to get good at them. You know, so get good is toxic. But like, I'm not even saying that for that crowd. Just there's the group that plays these because they're from soft games and they're difficult. You know, and they, I got killed. Oh, I didn't get killed. Oh my goodness. Hey, remember how I talked about the fact that sometimes you hit um, enemies twice and it feels like they should be dead, but they aren't? That dude hit me with that torch and felt like I should have been dead. <laughs> I do not know how I survived that. Like, I do know that I got up and um, hitting him back quickly helped me get hit points back. But, yeah. I should have died there. Anyway. Um, this area, by the way, has a lot of these little houses and stuff, and some of them will have friends. Including rifle dicks. Um, oh, this was a whole party. This was a whole party. I came in a little underdressed, but I'm, I'm ready now. You have the crowd that plays these games because they're hard, you know, video games. They're from soft games. It's a challenge, and that's the more video game crowd. You have the other crowd that plays these games because they usually have very rich, deep stories. You know, and I've mentioned like Bloodborne has a very light on the ground story. I will say that a positive about that is it does make it easier for you to immerse yourself um, into the experience. Hey, Rifle Dick! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it does make it easier for you to immerse yourself in the experience. There's a little back door here, which is good because I don't think the shack had a front door. Also, there's nothing in it. Are we sure about that? I'm gonna roll around and destroy your shit because it feels like there should be something in here. But there wasn't. Just an excuse to roll around and destroy shit. Cool. Um, Bloodborne not having a very in-your-face type of story. Five blood vials. Uh, something there wanted to kill me. Yep, see? Saw you out of the corner of my eye. I also seem to be stuck on gravestones. Got myself out. Uh, gives you the opportunity to immerse um, and be a part of that story. And I tend, like, it's funny. I the I fell into the first camp the first time I played Bloodborne. Um, you know, I heard it was a difficult game, um, and it had seemed to have a great atmosphere, you know, but it was very difficult, and like, are you up to the challenge, you know, so, I have so many beast blood pellets that some just got put in storage, I didn't even know that they went into storage, so that's a thing, um, the times I've played it since are absolutely for the story, being part of this hunt, and the monsters and something weird and otherworldly and eldritch happening in this town um, and unraveling that mystery and everything, that's a way to go forward. And I'm more exploring right now. So I'm going to hold off on that. Because you see, like I said, a lot of these houses as goodies. Pungent blood cocktails also went to storage. So there's probably a maximum number on each individual item that you can collect. Uh, oh, that's where I fell from. Oh, that's why I was going to say, like, there's an open gate over there, and I was like, oh, that's where I opened the gate, except that's not where I opened the gate. Okay, there was also, I have to admit, there was something I was looking for um, that I know is over in this general area, um, and I wanted to make sure I didn't miss it, 
but I just remembered it is actually on the other side of that gate. Once again, Orp, that's where I came from. <laughs> so... Just doing the last little bit of exploring, and then there's a gate here. It's the entrance to the area. That's nice. Look at that. And it's open, probably because I was here. Oh, shoot! That time, you see then that the button, it, wow. I like how the stick stays there that time. The other one falls off and like crumbles and rolls away. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> um, that gate probably would have been closed if I had come that way and I would need to open that gate and I might have died from head concussion kind of exploring back this way a little bit. Eventually I'll probably find that way. There's the flowers. I don't know. Okay. But what I do know is why kids love the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And that is because it's fucking delicious. But anyway, uh, we are going to head this way. And I think when you see why, you'll be very surprised. Because suddenly I'm clickbait. This pathway out of uh, the village is going to surprise you. I'm a BuzzFeed article. Number 15 will make you puke on your dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried to go anywhere else and my brain was like, nope, that's, that's what we picked. That's what we came up with. That's where we're going. What, what are we, improv comedians that just come up with shit on the fly? Yeah, kind of. I've taken some improv classes. I like to think that I'm pretty decent at improv. Lantern and a talkie person. Let's, Let's talk, talk to a talkie talk person because I, it's probably a good idea for me to stop talking right now. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to see. Oh, she has a puppy. Oh, she had a puppy. Got to put the trigger warning back up. I don't say that at all sarcastically, by the way. Just, you know. Yeah. Dogs in cages that are getting sliced up. By the way, you'll notice at least one of these cages is open. I'm pretty sure. I like how when there's people you can talk to, there's just like little holes in their door. You can try to peek. I always want to kind of see if they're, unless that's her sitting right up against the door. Oh, it is. There's hair. There is an actual person in there. Sitting right up against their door, really upset about the way of the world. Um, there does not appear to be a way to get in. What, don't you want me to tell you about somewhere safe? You would think that she'd be like, hey, unless you, you know, can you tell me anywhere that's not as bad as it is here? And I'd be like, you could go to Saskatoon, New Jersey. <laughs> I don't know what I just said. Okay. I want to kind of show this carefully because this is really surprising and like it's one of those things when I heard about it I immediately wanted to know how to do it but this area is a little confusing. That lady you talk to that says to be quiet she's got uh, cages of dogs behind her house. Head past those to the left. 
you will see this cave with those torches around it. Head into the cave, fall into the cave, and it's got blue flowers that are also very pretty. Very pretty. Again, I'm looking around for items like that one. Two antidotes. Again, do I, I like, it almost seems like I have something on that just gives me echoes every now and then. Cause like what died where that gave me echoes? Was it this thing? Didn't attack me. Anyway, head, head down, head down, head down, head down through the cave, through the cave, through the cave. You will end up here. Here is dangerous. Here is dangerous. Notice how it gave you antidotes. Make sure they are on your quick select. Put them as the item. Because I have very unfortunate news for you. That water right there is poisonous. In case you thought that was too easy, I'll give you a little bonus. In this water, besides these big dudes walking around, having themselves a good little just tiny time, there are these little worm things, uh, and they will ruin your entire life. You know, I'd love to be able to just like, hey. All right. You walk into the water and you see your poison starts going up, and there's the little worms. I just wanted to show you that they exist. You know, unlike, um, and they can't seem to be shot. Unlike rodents of the usual size, I believe that poisonous swamps uh, worms exist. Fast forward the rest of this potion, or poison. Okay, we're back. Um, I'm going to say that, um, there will be times you'll be coming through here and you'll just be like, I just want to go, I just want to go. You notice there is a shore that you can kind of make your way along. Your toes might dip in the water for a second. Oh, poison, poison, poison. If you see the building, you can, you know, get onto dry land. And this guy apparently doesn't care. Do you see, like, oh God. They're like worms, but they're like the size of, like, disgusting. <laughs> and they're really hard to hit, and they can make you really dead. And like, you notice that it sounds like you're taking damage, but nothing in particular is hitting you. That will 10 times out of 10 be the case. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. There's, I was going to say, there's stuff alive here because I saw that happening. Bloodstone shard. Okay. Now I could pretty safely get across. And genuinely thinking about it. I really don't want to tempt fate. I know it seems like not very let's play of me to be like, hey, let's just keep going. But hey, let's just keep going. There is something over here. Nourishing blood gemstone, but there's an entrance out over here. I'm slow poisoned. Anecdotal picks that. They heard me, but guess what? It's too late, baby. It's too late. Oh, and there's a tunnel over here to the other side, which is important because there's a thing over there. Seven frenzied cold blood. There are snakes. There are snakes, and there's guys. Neither of which I'm interested in dealing with at the moment. Okay. 33 minutes. I'm going to put this out here as I make my way through this cave. Um, I have been giving serious thought to making episodes of Bloodborne an hour. Because it just doesn't feel like enough happens in an episode in 30 minutes. I mean, just keep them coming, I guess. But I don't want the series to go too long. I mean, Link to the Past, which I thought had, you know, pretty long but action-packed episodes, um, 
was about 16 hours, about 32 episodes that were more or less 30 minutes. Um, this is already the, I said, 17th. Well, now, actually, it's probably the 18th or 19th. Uh, I think the 19th episode of Bloodborne. And I don't really even think I'm halfway through this game. So anyway, you climb up here, and the architecture starts to look a little more familiar. And there's a ladder. And you climb up this ladder. Y'all, are you ready for this? I mean, some of you already know. But the first time I actually saw this and that this worked and this was a thing, it blew my friggin' mind. This look familiar to anybody? Yeah. Welcome back to Central Yarnum. Welcome back to the first area of the game. There's a cold blood dew here. It seems like a, a rationed type item to the level you're supposed to be when you're here, but you, like, you can't get it until... Remember this gate? Or, or, cut in a clip all the way back from the, I think, yeah, I think I got out to this part in the first episode, but when we got to this gate on the other side, not just, not just in the corner, but like an actual cut to that clip. There's a glowy ball over there. So many closed doors in this game. Yeah, you see? Right back to where it all started. There's a shortcut from the very beginning of the game to here. And by the way, you more or less crawled out of a grave to make it happen. Now, I am actually glad I'm here because there's something that I remember to do with Toopington and I mentioned it here. See, this is Ayasefka's clinic. We have not yet had the pleasure of talking to, finger quotes, Ayasefka. Find it interesting that the lichen here, the first one that you fight, is just gone after a certain point. But I don't know. So anyway, as we take this little walk back through memory lane, there's a lantern. I've got 20,000. Um, there was a door up here that was locked that showed us that we had to go the other way. We can talk to that door. Oh, well, hello. Splendid. Let me ask you a small kindness. She's a sexy voice. You're soon off to hunt, I presume? Uh-huh. Then, if you find any survivors, tell them to seek Yusefka's clinic. Yes, yes, yes. Upon my Hippocratic oath, if they are yet human, I will look after them. Perhaps even cure them. This sickness, these beasts, they are not to be feared. Yeah, they are. This time the night is long. I may be trapped here, but I should do something to help. I'll even offer a reward for your cooperation. Tempted? Well, off you go then. I really like her voice. Uh, I've kind of spoiled it a couple times already. That's not Yosefka. I won't say who it is. I'm not entirely sure I remember, but um, uh, but yeah, that's uh, somebody has taken over Yosefka's clinic. Something I'm confused about is that if she's trapped in there, then how are we sending people to her? Maybe she just means trapped in the clinic, and if you send somebody to her, that she'll open that door. You do eventually get in there. So, that's a thing. Um, but yeah, I really wish I could kind of go back in time and send that old woman there. I don't know of any other characters specifically that you can save that I would want to send to Ayasefka. She will reward you, although I think it's like sedative or like blue elixir, something that I don't really use, so it's not a great reward. Yeah. Um, but now, like, from that spot, that is a convenient way. It goes through a difficult area and can take a little while, but 
uh, a way to get to a rather convenient lantern. And um, get to the Hunter's Dream. And then you can come back here to Yosefska's clinic. And from there, um, use the shortcut to get back to that area. So I am going to level up once and am I going to put it in vitality? Am I going to put it in skill? Am I going to put it in blood tinge, which I don't even really know what that does. Uh, arcane, which increases discovery. I'm going to put it in strength. <laughs> I know some people that, like, really love playing Bloodborne and play it a lot are probably frustrated because I've mentioned the combination of, um, like, um, strength, vitality, those numbers, those levels that you put in each, that is called your build, and people can be very particular about their builds about how your character is built. Is it a skill build? Is it a strength build? Is it a endurance? I don't know if I've ever heard endurance build, but I'm sure it exists. Um, and here, I'm just like, what do I want to do right now? It's like, mine is the random build. Okay, so I can tell you there's going to be one more episode in this recording session. But that means I need to wrap up this one. Next time, we are going to head back to um, the Forbidden Woods. I was like, we're going to head back to the area past Hemwick Charnel Lane. And I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. We ended that there. We're going to head back to the Forbidden Woods and see what mysteries await us there. So that's going to do it for another episode of Bloodborne on Orange Ranger Plays. Thank you, heroes, so much, as always, for watching. Thank you, gamers, so much, as always, for watching. And until next time, may the power of the blood protect you. Got him! Hey, doll, I do a thing where I shoot and I say, got him. This pathway out of uh, the village is going to surprise you. I'm a BuzzFeed article. Number 15 will make you puke on your dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tried to go anywhere else, and my brain was like, nope, that's, that's what we picked. That's what we came up with. That's where we're going. What, what are we? 